Welcome to another episode of Untold Legends, where we explore the stories found within the world of video games, movies, comic books, and anything in between. In this special timeline series, we'll be going over the storyline of the Devil May Cry series in great detail, from its origins all the way through Devil May Cry 5, so there will be plenty of spoilers ahead. And for the canon police out there, be aware, some information might be pulled from sources, not considered canon, and some assumptions may be made in order to fill in some missing story gaps. And there have been some traditional novels released, but with very limited visuals to work with, I'll only use some of their key points and not go over the entire storylines. Devil May Cry is one of the most popular franchise to be found in video games, with a strong fan base supporting it since its initial release. Over the years, there have been plenty of imitations, but nothing that can match its blend of intense action deep lore, and unique personality. But Devil May Cry didn't begin as its own original series. Were it not for Capcom's Resident Evil series, it might have never existed. After Resident Evil 2 was completed in 1998, Capcom began working on another installment for Sony's upcoming PlayStation 2. With a new console on the way, Capcom was also looking into reinventing Resident Evil with the next installment. The development team examined various castles in Spain to get ideas for new environments that would be explored, and during its prototype stages, it became such a drastic departure from traditional Resident Evil that Capcom decided to keep the ideas intact and turn it into a brand new original IP. Interestingly enough, the Spanish castle setting was reused later for Resident Evil 4, and the story for this new IP was reworked into an action-oriented tale, partially inspired by the Italian poet Dante's Divine Comedy. It became Devil May Cry. Let's rock, baby. At his very beginnings, the main character started out as the gun-toting Tony Redgrave, star of what at the time would have been Resident Evil 4, and he would have been son of Oswell Spencer, one of the founders of the Umbrella Corporation. When Resident Evil 4 became Devil May Cry, Tony also became Dante. And Capcom added swords to further separate him from his Resident Evil roots, and his personality was inspired by the lead character of the Japanese manga Cobra. Described as a hero with a provoking look, ironic style, and capacity to change from a little smile to a serious face. Dante was designed as an overly confident, witty fighter, dressed in a long red coat to appear more showy, a half-human, half-demon hunter that could dispatch hordes of monsters with little effort, and at the same time indulge in an over-the-top sense of humor. I'll take that. Even though Dante is the lead character, the story of the Devil May Cry universe didn't begin with him. It began with his father, the legendary Sparta. To understand his tale and why it's so important to the series, let's go back to the beginning of everything. Before anything existed, the universe was a vast expanse of unending darkness. Somewhere in that primordial nothingness, a ray of light appeared and split the universe into two separate realities. One half became the physical world, where stars, galaxies, and the Earth formed, a planet that eventually became the world of the mortal beings known as humans. The original darkness that covered the universe became the other half of reality, and slowly morphed into a realm that went by many names. The Underworld, Hell, the Devil Kingdom. This netherworld became home to beings known as demons, creatures gifted with supernatural abilities, born in a wide variety of shapes and sizes. Demons were generally much stronger than humans by their very nature, in order to survive the unforgiving environments of their world. While the human world had order to it, the underworld was a chaotic realm, where the normal rules of physics didn't apply. Gravity could be inverted, environments could rearrange themselves as if they were alive, space, time, and reality itself could warp into complete chaos, and the demon world even served as some sort of afterlife for the worst, most depraved humans in the mortal realm. Demon society existed in a sort of high hierarchy similar to a pack of animals where the strongest ones typically took control. Most demons were selfish and power hungry, devoid of love and compassion, often seeking ways to increase their own power to subjugate others. The earliest known ruler of the underworld was a demon king known only as the god of evil, but his rule would be challenged by another named Mundus. 
The key to his rise to power was found with a demonic tree that existed in the underworld, called the Clyphoth. The Clyphoth existed since before the birth of the demon world, and it was an inverse of the trees found within the human world. Its branches resided in the underworld, and its roots reached up into the mortal plane, using humans as a food source. The roots fed on human blood, and its victims became lifeless husks. The combined life force of the humans allowed the tree to grow one fruit every thousand years, a fruit that when devoured by a demon gifted them with immense powers. Mundus devoured the fruit, and with his newfound upgrade began amassing an army of demons, with the goal of overthrowing the god of evil. And after an epic battle, Mundus successfully destroyed the ruler of the demon world and claimed the throne for himself, becoming the self-proclaimed Prince of Darkness. For a time, Mundus brought order to his realm, and one of his loyal allies was a demon swordsman known as the Dark Knight Sparta. Sparta was quite different from many of his brethren, displaying a sense of honor and gained the respect of many other demons. During the reign of Mundus, Sparta took two demons that looked up to him, directly under his wing, and mentored them. Two twin brothers named Ball and Modius. Modius matched Sparta's own honorable personality and was a calm, gentle soul. His brother Ball, on the other hand, desired to be the best, and dreamed of one day surpassing Sparta as a swordsman. And over time, both brothers became demon lords under his teachings. But soon, their master would leave them, and the demon world would be forever changed. Mundus had already conquered the demon realm and began plotting to invade the human one. Both realms were once unified in a vast, dark universe, and he desired to remerge them and rule over both. Multiple portals and hell gates were constructed in order to open up pathways between the two realms, with the assistance of evil humans desiring dark powers, and a massive demon army began a brief war with the human world. Humanity stood no chance since the demons were physically superior to them in every way, and Mundus successfully dominated the mortal realm. Sparta watched the slaughter of the humans and could no longer stand by as they suffered. He desired nothing but peace and order, not the enslavement and decimation of an innocent species. Sparta may have been a demon born of the chaos of the underworld, but still felt pity for humans and woke up to justice, determined to stop Mundus and save the mortals. Before taking a stand against his king, Mundus instructed Ball and Modius to stand by and wait for his return, unwilling to let another demon risk themselves for his cause, and he fought against the army of Mundus single-handedly. Even though he was attacked in vast numbers, Sparta's strong will was unstoppable, and demon after demon fell before him. Standing in the throne room of Mundus, Sparta challenged the king of the underworld to combat, a demon swordsman facing off against against a mighty titan powered by the fruit of the Clyphoth. Sparta struggled in the battle, suffering several injuries, but his failure would mean that Mundus would go unchallenged for all time, and Mundus was furious that one of his allies would betray him over creatures that he deemed as animals, miserable playthings of a bored creator. He had brought order to the demon world and showed humans the superiority of demon kind. But as Mundus mocked Sparta and gained the upper hand, the Dark Knight took control of the battle and ended his tyranny, severely wounding him and promising that he would seal away the demon world forever. Many details of Sparta's life after saving the humans have been lost to time, but it's known that he spent his life ensuring that a massive invasion of the mortal realm couldn't happen again. Although multiple pathways existed to travel between the two realms, the main gate to the underworld was the Temenigru, a towering temple constructed by devil worshippers that acted as a passageway between the human and demon world. Mortals with evil in their heart were also able to use the structure to embrace the powers of darkness. Even with Mundus gone, Sparta knew that the Temeni Gru posed an enormous threat and performed a complicated ritual with the help of a human priestess to send it back into the underworld. First, he had to face the Seven Sins, a group of powerful demons that served as literal representation of the Seven Vices. Sparta subdued the demons and nailed them to the earth with cursed stakes and rendered them powerless by removing their names. The Seven Sins acted as a seal to keep the power of the Temeni grew locked away in the underworld. He also sealed away the five gatekeepers protecting the structure, leaving them unable to escape. But the strength of the seals weren't enough to hold forever, and Sparta used his sword to make the enchantment stronger. As the gates of the demon world closed, he poured a majority of his own demonic power into the blade to strengthen the seal, and the sword's natural powers fell asleep, and it changed form into a normal-looking blade called the Force Edge. And finally, Sparta tracked down an amulet with a large red gem set in the middle, which acted as a key to the underworld. Originally, Mundus had given it as a gift to corrupted humans who wanted power and access to the demon realm, but a key that can open doors could also be used to lock doors. But to lock the gateway, the amulet also required a blood sacrifice. The the priestess agreed to sacrifice herself for the greater good, and Sparta used his own blood combined with hers to place the final seal. The Temenigru was sent back into the underworld, and the gate couldn't be opened again without breaking multiple
multiple powerful seals and the amulet to open the gateway. The demon realm was without a ruler, and the weakened Mundus swore that one day he would return and take revenge on the traitor Sparta. But the human world still wasn't safe. Multiple smaller gateways still existed where lesser demons could filter through, and many of Mundus' servants were still present outside the demon realm. After the ritual, with Sparta pouring his demonic power into the Force Edge, he was severely weakened, and took a human form to blend in with the humans that he had saved. But even in his weakened state, he traveled the world defending them and hunting demons that viewed him as a traitor to his own kind, and used multiple weapons to aid him, imbued with some of his own powers. Sparta personally customized two handguns able to fire bullets at a rapid pace he named Lu Sinumbra. He also obtained a heavy double-edged claymore named the Rebellion, and a tremendously sharp katana, so sharp it could cut through the very fabric of space, the Yamato. During his travels, Sparta traveled to an isolated island called Fortuna that was under demon attack. He discovered a hellgate there known as the True Hellgate, and fought off the demons. One such demon conquered one of the most barbaric portions of the underworld known as the Fire Hell. His name was Burial, and Sparta battled him, sending him back through the hellgate. With the demons on Fortuna defeated, Sparta used the power of the Yamato to seal this Hellgate, ensuring the safety of its citizens. His deeds there fell into legend, and the people formed the Order of the Sword, a religious group that worshipped Sparta and believed him to be the savior of humanity. According to their legend, Sparta stayed with them for a time and became their lord, and their beliefs were worked into every aspect of their society. Young men were trained as devil slayers, holy knights seeking to purge the world of evil in the name of Sparta, and every year they celebrated the Festival of the Blade, a day that retold the history of Sparta's fight against the demon world in defense of humanity. Aside from Fortuna, another island was also at risk of falling to demon attacks. Dumari Island, located off the coast of the Americas, was originally settled by religious refugees that worshipped beings from other dimensions. After the defeat of Mundus, it was only a matter of time before a demon took his place. Centuries later, Argus axed the chaos to just that, becoming the new demon king. And in Dumari Island, there existed multiple people with various beliefs, a fact that Argus axed would take advantage of. One small tribe worshipped him and summoned him into the human world. Their legends speak that he was one of the most evil creatures of all time, and far surpassed the power of Mundus. With the island under attack, a clan called the Vida Marli clan, charged with the duty of protecting their society, reached out to Sparta and requested his help. He answered the call and battled Argusax back into the underworld, and with the aid of the clan, he used the Arcana to seal him away. Four sacred relics, a coin, a sword, a cup, and a staff powered by magical energy. The island was safe, but the ritual used on Argusax also temporarily trapped Sparta in the demon world. In the underworld, he defeated both Argusax and one of his most loyal generals, Bulwark. Eventually, Sparta did find a way to escape the underworld and return to defending humanity. But he desired to truly live as a human. Sometime in the 20th century, he met a human woman named Eva. He fell in love with her kind-hearted nature, and she accepted him for who he was, a demon in human form. Sparta gave her the perfect amulet as a gift and broke it into two halves. Soon after, the couple married and had two twin sons they named Dante and Virgil, with Virgil being slightly older by just a couple of minutes. The children grew up with Eva as their primary caregiver, as Sparta was frequently away fighting against demons where he was needed. But when he was home, he focused on training his children. Both of them inherited his greatest strengths, and their human appearance allowed them to blend into society. The boys spent much of their childhoods competing against each other in combat and testing which one was the better fighter, competitions that often turned into fights that Ava had to break up. But she loved both of her children fiercely and was extremely protective of them. At some point, Sparta also gave his sons his own weapons. Dante was given the Rebellion, and the Yamato was given to Virgil. But tragedy would soon strike the family, an event that would send both brothers on completely different paths. Sometime before Dante and Virgil's eighth birthday, Sparta disappeared. The details behind his disappearance have never been fully revealed. Some believe he set out to defend humanity against an unknown threat and lost his life. Some believe he was dragged back into the underworld to be punished for his betrayal. But the fact remains that Ava was left alone with the children, and Mundus took the opportunity to claim his vengeance from the underworld. On their eighth birthday, Ava gave Dante and Virgil a necklace that contained one half of the perfect amulet. Shortly after, Mundus was able to send a group of demons to their house and attack their home, setting it on fire. At the time, Virgil was outside playing by himself, and Dante was inside with his mother. Come here. You need to hide, Dante. No matter what happens, you 
mustn't leave. I need to find Virgil. I promise I'll be back. I know this is hard. You must listen to me. Be a big boy. A man, huh? If I don't return, you must run. By yourself, alone. You must change your name. Forget your past and start a new life. As someone else. A new beginning. Virgil! Where are you, Virgil? Outside, Virgil could see his home burning from a distance and was attacked by the monsters. He was able to fend them off with the Yamato and ran, believing that his mother had abandoned him, something that would haunt him for years. Dante survived the attack and found himself without a family. His mother was gone, and he believed his brother had also been killed in the attack. As the twins grew into adulthood and lived separate lives, Virgil became obsessed with gaining power and traveled the world, following the legends of his father and searching for his sword, the Force Edge. His travels took him to Fortuna, where his father once fought off the demons, to investigate the order of the sword and found himself surrounded. Virgil searched for answers, but much of the information he found was surrounded by myth and legend, making it difficult to pinpoint the exact location of his father's sealed power. But while he was there, a young woman took notice of him, not recognizing him around the city, and before leaving, Virgil shared a romance with her. He spent some time in Fortuna and may have developed feelings for her, but he saw human love and attachment as a weakness, and left to continue his quest for power. Unknown to him, the woman he left behind was pregnant with his child, a child that also had the blood of Sparta flowing within him. While Mundus regained his strength in the underworld, small parties of demons were being sent into the human world to find Sparta's twins. Dante's youth is mostly a mystery, but he did follow his mother's wishes and changed his identity. He chose the name Tony Redgrave, and at some point in his early youth, ended up in the port town of Morris Island. He tried to live a normal life and developed a friendship with another boy called Ernest, who knew Dante as Anthony. But near the town there existed ruins to a hell gate, and demons came through looking for him. The entire town was destroyed and set on fire, killing most of the town people. Few survived, and many reported being attacked by demons in the chaos, and some of them accused Dante of starting the fire, and he left town to keep anyone from being hurt again. Had he not been there, the demons would have never attacked it. And although his mother was dead for some time, some of the townspeople remember him fleeing with a woman, who they described as his mother possibly a guardian that Dante had been staying with at the time. As an adult, Dante developed in contrast to his brother. Instead of seeking ultimate power like Virgil, he focused on paying back the demon world for taking his mother from him and destroying his family. He had the rebellion sword that his father had given him and Sparta's guns, but instead of using them, he had his own set of handguns crafted. He formed a working relationship with a woman named Nell Goldstein, a gunsmith that owned the shop 45 Caliber Works. She was incredibly skilled in crafting custom weapons and possibly had a hand in designing his father's handguns. Dante, going by the alias Tony Redgrave, brought her spare parts from her several busted pistols, and using the spare parts, she created Dante's guns, Ebony and Ivory, dual handguns that could channel Dante's power and add a rapid fire feature. After completing them, she branded them with her old logo on the sides of each pistol and added the engraving for Tony Redgrave by 45 Caliber Artworks. She saw the guns as a masterpiece, and to make them truly Dante's, she left them disassembled, forcing him to put them together himself. Armed with a powerful sword and formidable handguns, Dante worked on opening up his own demon hunting business and began building a reputation as the man that would take up the strangest jobs. But he needed someone to help him find jobs, and he partnered up with a young Italian-American man named Enzo Farino. 
Enzo became Dante's friend and contact within the world of mercenaries, and he also found him a location where he can open up his business. His twin brother Virgil happened to be operating in the same town, still searching for information on their father, and he found a library with ancient texts. In the library, he met a man named Arkham that curiously knew more information about Sparta's legend than anybody else he had encountered. Arkham was actually descended from the same priestess that Sparta had sacrificed to seal away the Temenigru. grew. He became so obsessed with the legend of Sparta and the possibility of obtaining demonic powers that he began studying the black arts and murdered his wife, Kalina Ann, in a failed ritual to reopen the gate to the underworld. The ritual scarred his face, leaving a large burn mark, but he did gain a small amount of demonic power. This new power allowed him to transform into an alter ego he could disguise himself as, a crazed clown called Jester but Arkham also had a daughter named Mary. Mary grew up mainly with her mother since her father had become obsessed with learning the dark arts. After her mother's murder, she abandoned the name her father gave her and swore to avenge her death. Mary armed herself with a rocket launcher with a blade attached to it, named it after her mother, and became a demon hunter herself, with the main objective of finding and killing her father. But Arkham wasn't worried about his daughter. He dreamed of gaining Sparta's powers and becoming an unstoppable demon lord, and when he saw Virgil, he knew the blood of Sparta was flowing within him. Arkham explained the history of his father as he understood the legends, and revealed that Sparta had sealed the Seven Sins in order to place the seals on the Temeni Gru. Although Virgil was suspicious of Arkham's motives, he used Virgil's own desire to gain power in order to convince him to form an alliance. Together, the two of them searched for the Seven Sins, restoring their names and breaking the chains that binded them. Later on, Enzo had seen Virgil walking in the street and confused him for Dante. At that point, Virgil realized that the brother he hadn't seen for years was in the same city. It was the perfect opportunity to attain the amulet and unlock the door to the Demon Realm and while attempting to release another one of the Seven Sins, Virgil encountered Dante. Dante was shocked to see Virgil, at first relieved that his brother had seemingly returned from the grave, but the twins had grown apart over the years, and their motives were vastly different. Dante hated the demons and wanted to avenge his mother, Virgil wanted to gain the power of their father. In Virgil's mind, power was all that mattered and it was clear to Dante that there would be no changing his mind. Just like in their childhood competitions, the brothers clashed, and during the battle, Virgil stole Dante's half of the amulet and yelled at Virgil to give it back. Although he needed it, the overly confident Virgil returned it to him, claiming that he can get it back at any time. Without releasing the Seven Sins, he still wouldn't be able to do anything with the amulet anyways. Dante and Virgil parted ways for now, brothers separated by the tragedy of their mother's death and reunited as enemies. Make sure to join me next time for the Devil May Cry Timeline Part 2, Facing the Past, in which Dante is forced to confront his brother again and accept his legacy, or watch the world that his father grew to love be destroyed. And the same evil that Sparta single-handedly fought against two millennia ago takes advantage of his absence and threatens to return. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button with all of your strength. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any new content. You can follow me on social media or go into my community tab for updates. And for as little as a dollar a month, you can support the channel directly on Patreon. This is Fabian, I love you guys, and I'll see you next time.